My main favorites today, and it's a little bit late, I know that kind of sucks, but hopefully it won't matter, so we'll just call this current favorites for May and the first week of June. Uh, in May, I actually didn't buy any makeup except for a mascara, which is actually in the favorite section, so uh, everything in this is stuff I've had for a while, so let's just jump right into it. The first thing, uh, the other unusual thing about May is that for once I've actually got a couple of hair-related favorites, and like skincare type stuff. I don't normally do that. Normally it's just makeup and stuff. But the first one is a new shampoo and conditioner that I started using that I really like. It is the Aveeno Pure Renewal 2-in-1 Shampoo and Conditioner. As for this being a 2-in-1 type thing, eh, not really. I still have to use a conditioner on the ends of my hair, but the ends of my hair also were previously bleached, so they're a little bit drier. Um, it's just a preferential thing. I think, think someone that has nicer uh, hair than mine that isn't quite as dry might not need a conditioner with this because it, it is quite nice. It smells really lightly fragranced, but it does make your hair smell clean. And it's just a good all-around conditioner, uh, shampoo and conditioner. Uh, I changed this because I was using L'Oreal Everpure again and once again had massive scalp issues, major flaking and bleeding and itching and all this stuff. And I, I, it's, it's the shampoo. It's got to be. I switched to this. It took about five or six shampoos, but now I don't have any more issues with it, so I definitely think it was a shampoo, but I like this. I was on the search for another small fate free shampoo after the Walmart that I go to discontinued using Giovanni, so sorry for all the noise in the background. We are having a dinner party soon, so my husband's trying to cook. Uh, another hair product is the Offy Miracle Color Insurance. I lost the cap to it ages ago. If you're in the U.S., you will not be able to find this here. I bought this in the U.K., and I'm actually probably going to have to get my mother-in-law or someone to send me over some more because I absolutely love it. It's just... I wouldn't call it a color insurance spray. I don't know why they call it that. I think it's just a gimmick, but it's really just a nice leave-in conditioner. I can spray it on when my hair is wet and actually get a brush through it, which is really difficult. Otherwise, it's really nice. Um, it smells nice as well. Peach is kind of scented. I tried to look for this in the U.S. and could not find it. They had a heat protectant spray, but no, uh, nothing like this, so. Uh, that's it for the hair stuff. I'll get to face stuff later. The uh, next item is another face primer. This is from Avon. This is the Magix Face Perfector. I like the packaging. It's kind of neat, and it's nice and tiny and compact. And this was, um, I want to say it's about $8.99 for one out, so it's less expensive than the L'Oreal Match Gloomy Face Primer. It doesn't do the same thing, it doesn't quite have the illuminating properties, but this is a really nice little product because it almost is like a light tint and moisturizer just on its own, but it has no color. I don't know what it does, but um, I've seen some really a lot of reviews on YouTube about this thing that it did that. And I, I do like it, I haven't used it that much, but it is, I believe, silicone based, so it does have that slight Vaseline feeling, which I'm not. 100% sold on, but it's not a heavy Vaseline feeling. The next item is a foundation. This is the Physician's Formula Youthful Wear uh, SPF 15 foundation. I'm in the shade Fair, the lightest shade. I didn't like this that much when I first got it, but the as I use it more, it kind of grew on me, and I like it more now. I, I need to use a primer with it, I think is the problem. I need to make sure I moisturize well first. But once your skin is properly moisturized, this is actually quite nice is a sleek palette that I've kind of revisited. This is from the Mediterranean collection. This is uh, Monaco. I mostly, like I use all the colors in this. I took this on vacation with me as my colorful palette. And let me flip it this way so I don't blind you. And I actually discovered that this color here is actually really good for my eyebrows on days where I don't want to do full on um, dark eyebrows. And I think it's called like Fan Walker or something. And then I really like this blue down here as well and this lilac together. I always thought it was a combination I was using a lot. So, um, revisited sleek palette. A lot of my favorites this month are revisited items, so. The only new item that I've gotten this month that is on the favorites list is a new mascara, and this is the Maybelline Mega Plush Volume Express Mascara. This just came out last month, and I like the packaging, first of all, the teal and pink. They always have cute packaging. And most of the time I like Maybelline mascaras. The only one that was kind of a fail for me was the fall season. A lot of people didn't like that one. And this is actually really similar to the Colossal. And one of the gimmicks it has is that it has this little, I don't want to touch it because I'll get mascara, up, but it has this little bendy bit right here. That's a total gimmick. It doesn't help you at all because you don't put enough force behind the brush to actually get it to bend while it's on your eye. I, I don't know what, what that is. But what I actually like about this, the brush is nice. It grabs my lashes and lifts them. I get a really nice curl with this, but also the formula, and it advertises this, that it's like a a mousse-like formula, and I have to agree, it is very lightweight. 
Uh, it doesn't make your lashes feel crunchy. I've gone up to three coats on this and they still don't get crunchy at all. I will say that with that being a mousse formula, it doesn't have the most waterproof-like tendencies. It does get a little bit runny. I've gone jogging with it on a couple times or bike riding and I do get raccoon eyes. So, eh. It's still overall a good mascara though. The Avon Tropical Peach Blush Stick. I had the uh, rose one in here a couple of months ago, and this is the, the peachy color. I guess I'll show it to you. Peachy, sort of. Uh, I like these blush sticks a lot. I'm probably not going to get any more right at the moment unless they release new shades, because I'm not really that interested in any of the other shades. I wanted the peach and the other one that I have, so I've been using that a lot this month. Like I said, I've talked about them previously and I really like them, so they're about six bucks each, so for the price, quite good. From MAC, this is a semi-precious crystal pink mineral eye skin finish from the semi-precious collection. And I loved this when I first got it and then I kind of put it away for a little while because I, I kind of overdosed a little bit on it, I think, and then rediscovered it and just absolutely loved it. And it's got, I use it, you can blend it together to get a nice kind of rosy pink color and then you can also use the outside of the highlighter. So I, I use that outside ring on the inside edges of my eye and on my cheek and then blend it together in the middle to get the cheek product. And um, I think I'm going to have this for a long time because even though I've used it every day in May, it's still not got a dent in the dome. So uh, that's a nice product. Unfortunately, discontinued. The Maybelline Color Tattoo in Too Cool, this is the Shimmery White. I didn't use this for a while after I first got it because I had intended to use it for my kit. And I did use it for my kit a couple of times, but started using it on myself as well. And I like it as an inner corner highlight a lot and as an alternative to NYX, um, the Jumbo Pencil in Milk because this lasts longer on me. Last few items are lip products and the first one is the one I'm wearing right now, which is the MAC Lip Gel A in Now in Season and that sticker's peeling off. And this might have been in my favorites before, I don't really know, but this is just a super glittery gold with like blue and pink sparkles in it. I love this. Again, rediscovered it. And this thing is absolutely massive. For as much as I used it, it's got no signs that I've even used it, so this is going to last me forever. The last two are lipsticks. The first one is an NYX color, and I hope I didn't have this in there last month. I don't think I did, but if I did, sorry. This is the NYX Round Lipstick in Hot Melon. Just a really nice coral shade. This is kind of in. It's similar to MAC uh, Vegas Volt, kind of along that line. A little bit less neon than Vegas Volt. But overall a really nice shade, quite summery. Uh, I often wear this with just mascara on the eyes, this on the cheeks, and this on the lips. And it's just a really nice summery co combination. Another one is a Revlon Cream Super Lustrous Lipstick in Raspberry Bite, number 745. This is looks super dark in the in the tube, but it doesn't come out that dark. It's a really nice berry shade, and I've been looking for one for a while without it being too fuchsia pink, and this is pretty much perfect, and it's just, oh, this is gorgeous. It's probably similar to kind of a cross between Girl About Town for MAC and Rebel. It's a little bit darker than Girl About Town, but not as dark as Rebel, um, but I've been wearing this a lot, and every time I wear it, I get a compliment, and someone asks me what it is, so, and they assume it's something expensive, but it's totally not my two non-favorites this month, as I often do. I didn't have any last month, but the first one is a moisturizer that I've, that I've been using for years, and now I've had to switch away from it. It's the Clean & Clear Pore Perfecting Moisturizer. A lot of people love this, gets rave reviews on blogs, but unfortunately, it started doing something fun funny with my skin. It wasn't absorbing properly, especially like in my T-zone here. I would put it on, and like five minutes later, I've literally just got beads of it like all over my face, and it just wasn't absorbing. I thought it was sweat, for a long time and I realized it's the moisturizer. It's supposed to be oil free so I don't know what is going on with that but I realized that it was making makeup application difficult as well so I'm switching away from it. Just bought a brand new one today. It's a Neutrogena one. I'm wearing it today and I didn't have the weird oil slick issues so I, I'm assuming it's the moisturizer unfortunately but boo on that. The other one is an item that has been hyped like crazy on blogs, but little I've been reading lately, and it's the Estee Lauder Invisible Fluid Makeup. This is supposed to be a dupe for, I've got a sample. This is supposed to be a cheaper dupe for the Chanel Vital Lumiere Aqua Foundation. It's a water-based foundation, very popular right now. The formula of this is nice. It is almost identical to the Chanel Vital Lumiere Aqua, though I have to say that I feel like the Vital Lumiere Aqua has a better texture, just being honest. Um, my issue with this is the color. This is the lightest cool tone shade and it looks kind of okay on the outside of the bottle. Like I was looking at it like, oh man, that'll be perfect. 
except then you look, do you see the color difference from there to there? Do you see how orange that is? Yeah, it, it looks that orange on the skin. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but and part of that is oxidation. Part of that is the fact that the bottle is slightly frosted, so it makes it look lighter than it actually is. But I put this on and it was too dark for me. I'm not even that light toned. And I'm a little disappointed with Estee Lauder because this is supposed to be the lightest shade. The lightest shade of the Chanel Vital Lumi or Aqua is perfect for me. So sure, this is a cheaper option, but you may not be able to find as good of a color match. And I've seen on blogs where people were wearing the same shade and they were lighter than I am and it looked fine on them, so I don't know if maybe my skin oxidized it. I'm not really sure, but not happy with color selection on that. The product itself is okay, but I just think that the oxidation, how orange it is for the lightest shade, is a bit ridiculous, to be honest. So that's it for my favorites and my couple of non-favorites, and I will see you next month. Bye!